And don't forget to keep on tagging everything with no follow because that makes everyone's SEO jobs much more difficult. Go forth and dominate. Okay, a bit of a disclaimer. I feel like elements of that video are slightly sarcastic. Google does some fantastic work and we love Google. Of course, being told by Google that we don't need to go and do all of this extra work in our daily lives isn't always welcome. But of course, if it's for the greater good, read Google's profit, then of course we'll be happy to comply. In this video, I'm going to explain what nofollow, sponsored and UGC tags are and how to use them. So recently, Google has unveiled some new link attributes, which it's going to ram down our throat. So in this video, we're going to look at what sponsored and UGC links are. Also do a bit of a refresh on what a nofollow link is and explain how to use them. I know what you're thinking, Tim, it's another potentially boring topic. How are you going to make this interesting? And I'm thinking, Parmesan for? I've got you covered. We're going to demystify this and turn this potentially boring topic into something that's clear and will make you money. Let's go. Okay, so what are nofollow UGC and sponsored? They're basically link attributes. Now, a link attribute is a hidden piece of text that sits in every link. So when you've got a web page and you've got all the black normal text and then you've got that blue link, right? The reason that that's a link is because there's HTML code that tells your browser that that's a link. And in that HTML code, you can have what are called attributes. So when you click on a link and it opens in a new tab or it opens in a new window, that's because in the HTML, there's a link link attribute which makes that happen. These link attributes are the same sort of thing. So when you've got in your HTML code, you can put rel equals and then in apostrophes no follow and that turns a link into a no follow link. Comprende? So Google has handed us these link attributes which we have to use. So let's go for the basic one first of all, the no follow link attribute. When you add rel equals no follow in speech mark. What you're essentially telling Google is that the page you're linking to, you don't want to pass any link equity to. So when you link from your website to another website, you are passing link equity. You don't lose any of this link equity or link juice yourself, but you're basically voting for that other website. And this is how Google's algorithm works. It sees that vote and says, oh, this website must be, you know, high authority and that can help it in ranking. So when you have a no follow attribute, you're saying, well, look, I want to link to this site, but I'm not ready to pass any link juice to it. I'd, you know, I'd rather just not do that. So Google brought out the no follow attribute. All other links are just follow links, right? So if it doesn't have a no follow tag, it's just a follow link. There's no such thing as do follow. Some people say, oh, it's a do follow link rather than no follow. Do follow doesn't exist. It's either a normal link or a no follow link. Now Google has brought out sponsored tags. So if a piece of content on your website is like, like a paid advertisement or an endorsement, you are now supposed to add a sponsored attribute to any links that go out to the company that sponsored you. And this is to show Google that this is part of a sponsorship. So they don't want to pass full link equity to that site. They want to understand what's going on here. Now you could say they just want to program their machine learning algorithm and they want to understand which companies are paying for links so that they can penalize them and understand what the relationship and all of that stuff is. You could say that that. You could, you might, definitely could. And basically Google's stance here is that any link that's been paid for, it doesn't want to count in its ranking algorithm because that's technically against their guidelines. But it's a bit high horsey, but hey, Google's put the work in to build the ranking algorithm to, so to an extent they decide the rules. So in your sponsored link, you would have the typical HTML for a link. So the triangle bracket A, href equals, and then in speech marks, your link. And then you'd also have have rel equals sponsored in speech marks and then you close the tag. So that's what your sponsored link would look like. Now what about UGC tags? This is another new one. And Google has decided to give us slash force this down our throats and we're supposed to put UGC tags anytime there is user generated content on the site. So say you've got a blog post and you get comments under that post and some of these comments say love this post, keep it up, check out best 
Dentist Wisconsin and there's a link in there. Well, that might not be a link that Google wants to listen to because that's been a user generated comment that's basically comment spam. And that's not the sort of thing that Google wants to give that website any credit for. So what you would do here is you would automatically set any links that appear in your comment section to be UGC, which tells Google this is user generated content and therefore that shouldn't necessarily be trusted. Now we don't actually know what Google's gonna do with links that are sponsored or UGC. So it might be that it's just trying to learn which sites have sponsored or UGC links on. It might be that Google's trying to understand what sort of links look like sponsored or UGC links so that it can ignore them or potentially look at linking penalties later on. Who knows? But current wisdom says that we need to use these sponsored and UGC links. So if you're unsure which type of tag you should be using, then you can use multiple tags if you so choose. So you can make it, for example, no follow and sponsored by putting both of those tags on the link if you want extra Google brownie points, but it's unlikely to impact your ranking in the short or medium term. So if you want to do more of Google's job for it, then go ahead and use these new links, sponsored and UGC. And don't forget to keep on tagging everything with no follow because that makes everyone's SEO jobs much more difficult. Go forth and dominate. Okay, bit of a disclaimer. I feel like elements of that video are slightly sarcastic. Google does some fantastic work and we love Google. Of course, being told by Google that we don't need to go and do all of this extra work in our daily lives isn't always welcome. But of course, if it's for the greater good, read Google's profit, then of course we'll be happy to comply. <laughs> In all seriousness, should you be using these tags? If you are a media property or a blog that has sponsored content, then potentially it's something that you should be using. Better safe than sorry, and if you're the sort of person that likes to stick within Google's guidelines, like we are at Exposure Ninja, then yes, you want to be using these new attributes in the way that they are designed. We don't really understand what the implications will be of using these yet, because it's kind of too soon to know. We could just be programming Google's machine learning brain with all of this information so that it can use it against us in the future, but we won't really know until that future point. So I hope you found this video useful and if you want some help acquiring good quality links to your website to help your SEO then don't forget you can contact Exposure Ninja and request a free SEO review. Just go to ExposureNinja.com and request your free review by clicking that big fat button. Tell us a bit about your business and one of the team will put together a 15 minute video showing you how you can increase your ranking over the next 6 to 12 months. You can either do this yourself or you can ask us to do it if you like the recommendations in the video. Until the next one, see you soon.